What's happening, Hoop Fam? It's Fran Harris with another video on, what is this, week four of college women's basketball. No shock, South Carolina remained at the top. The 36-member panel for the AP poll actually agreed that South Carolina is balling outrageous and can't nobody touch them at this point. But I do like what I'm seeing from the rest of the landscape of college women's basketball. We're seeing that P word thrown around. We're seeing a little bit more parody. We're seeing things not be so predictable. And I personally think that is great for women's college basketball. It's good for any sport. Let's face it. Um, following South Carolina, the game Cox, you got UCLA, Stanford, Iowa, and NC State round out the top five. NC State is like nipping at the heels of everybody. They That's where they need to be. I mean, they are one of those teams that literally could be in the top three, depending on how things go. But I've said it before, I love Wes as a coach. I think he's done a great job at NC State with the Wolfpack. And I just think they're always kind of in the hunt. When they got the the ballers in play, they definitely got the coaching um, in play for that for that team. Then we've got Stanford. Let's talk about, well, actually, let's talk about UCLA. Let's talk about how good UCLA looks. Now, a lot of people will say, well, they haven't really played anybody. And I don't know about that. I don't think anybody's played a super tough schedule at this point. Yes, some people have played top 25, top 10, top 15, or whatever, but I don't think anybody's come out of the gate and just taken the world by storm simply by pay, playing all the, the the best teams in the league. That's the way it goes at this time of the year. A lot of people try to knock out one good, one to two good teams, really competitive teams to get a gauge where they where they are with the real teams, and then they play some of these other games that they play a lot of the times, not for themselves, but to help out another university. As we saw that in the media last week with South Carolina, and I can't remember the team that they were playing where people were like, my goodness, they only scored what, 25 points, 19 points. So it looks like a, looks like a bad deal, but when you understand the economics of sports and how these teams need to basically fund their programs then then it's a really a it's really a friendship game it really is it's a good a friendship game it's a goodwill game and I happen to like it so South Carolina did that last week but let's face it it doesn't really matter who South Carolina plays right now they're just damn good they're just good right now and playing great basketball then it becomes a question if you are a South Carolina fan or if you're a women's basketball fan would you want your team playing amazing out the gate to start the season amazing in conference or right after that conference tournament when it's time to kick it up for the playoffs what's your preference as a fan and if you're a coach hey you can tell me that as well but most of y'all are fans what do you want I personally don't want my team playing great in November I don't want them playing like they look like they should be in the final four in November because where do we have to go I'm also not one of those people who believes there's only one way to go, that you can only go down from here. But I do think there is a balance of how you look at the beginning of the season versus how you want to look at the end of the season. And so um, I do think there are probably going to be some concerns about if they're playing this well right now, how much better can South Carolina get? How much better can South Carolina get? And my answer to that is a lot better, way more better. You know, I think there was a movie that was like Mo Better Blues, like South Carolina can get a whole lot more better because you've got young players in the system already playing like they've been there before. And but what we know is that what happens in women's basketball, because it's a long season, is around that Christmas break point. A lot of players, veterans and new players, you start to hit a wall. It All of a sudden it just happens. And so you're not as fresh as you need to be. Your recovery is a little bit off. And, and a lot of times, freshmen, first years, they hit a wall. They hit a different kind of wall. There's a physical wall that we all hit when, when around the Christmas holidays. Mostly everybody hits a wall around that time. You've been playing for not, oh, see, November, December. You've been playing for like six or seven, eight weeks uh, straight through. And then you get tired physically, you get tired. So recovery becomes that. But the big question marks start to become, how do the freshies respond to all the demands on them, meaning academically, socially, with all everything that's going on in, in college sports. So demands from sponsors and deals and all that stuff, but then just the physical demands of a sport. And as much as these student athletes play all year round now, that, that wall 
is like, it's not just like a regular plaster wall. It's like a big brick wall. And if you hit it, it's a real thing. So the only question marks I have for teams like South Carolina who are playing extremely well is how does, how, how do the, the tolls and demands of, of women's college basketball, just playing a sport every day of your life, how does that impact um, full widely and some of the other young players of South Carolina? If they can get through that and then you got to play in the SEC, the Southeastern Conference, whoo, it's going to be rough. But if they can get through that fall break wall, recover, replenish, refuel, then the, the race to the Southeast Conference, the SEC Championship is going to be really fun for, for South Carolina. And I do think they are picked as a favorite to win. But let's not forget about some of the other good teams in the SEC. You got, I think I want to say Tennessee at this point. Not Of, co of course, Tennessee is in the SEC. But I don't know that they've been playing great uh, well enough for us to predict that they're going to be vying for an SEC championship. But some good teams in the SEC. Let's talk about UCLA. Everybody's talking about how they are not that good right now, that they are just playing a soft schedule. But I can say that about everybody as I started this video by saying, Nobody's going to come out the gate playing top five. Every, every game is going to be a top five. Nobody's going to do that for a lot of reasons. But the other thing is you can't really gauge, gauge how well a team is playing when they're not playing tough competition, right? So we know that UCLA has a, I would put them, if I were going to say a, a mid-tier schedule so far, I think UCLA is good. I have always liked their open court running. I've always loved the way close coaches and understands that she's got ballers who like, like to be in the open court, like to run transition, but they also defend fairly well. So I do like them. I do like what I'm seeing from them early on, just in terms of style, but the jury's still out on how good UCLA is. Stanford, you heard me guys, you heard my, you heard me guys, you heard me talking about um, Cameron Brink in my NIL in my NIL video, if you haven't, go to that. That's that's getting a lot of, of views and conversation around NIL. Um, the top, some of the top five players who are getting NIL deals, and Cameron Brink. I talked about her because she's she's getting better. She's etching up the the ladder in terms of NIL deals. But Stanford, let's just talk about the variety and the diversity of the the top four teams this week. South Carolina, run and gun, make the court as long as they can with full court pressure. And even when they're in half court, they make you regret that you have the basketball possession. So that's their style. They, they can hit you any, a number of ways from inside, outside on the bounce, all that UCLA, a little bit run and gun, but also a little bit more controlled in transition. I like that. Then we've got Stanford. All these teams are the, the top four are really kind of different. Stanford to me is looking more like a fast break team than I've seen lately even though Haley Jones from last year, they pushed the ball. But I, I would have not characterized them as, oh, you got to watch Stanford, their running gun team. That's not how I characterized Stanford last year. But this year I'm looking at what the style of play, that's where it always starts for me before I even start talking about individual players. When you look at the style of play, does it fit your personnel, which is always a coach's uh, goal is let's let's play the style that fits our personnel and sometimes coaches get it right and sometimes coaches don't get it right I think this year this year Stanford <clears throat> excuse me I think this year Stanford is getting it right I see a little bit more flexibility from Tara in terms of what freshmen are able to do in her system so I'm seeing the the newcomers you know balling like they did in high school which is always a, a challenge when you come to the next level because you know you have all these expectations you feel like you should have matured a little bit and and maybe you can't play the same way because of the talent around you but what I see in Stanford is that everybody's getting an opportunity to be who they are last but not least Iowa let's talk about Caitlin Clark Caitlin Clark Clark push somebody down Caitlin this ain't MME baby MMA what is it MMA or MME I don't know what it is because I don't watch it but that was a that was a shove Caitlin but we know Caitlin's nasty. We know that. Nasty isn't necessarily negative, but it can be. But we know, we know. If you're watching, you see Caitlin Clark being nasty. You saw it in the final four and you're seeing it now. So I love the fact that we are talking about Caitlin Clark in different lights because she is a full dimensional player. She's not all good and she's not all bad. And we're seeing 
that shadow of Caitlin Clark, which for me, I think makes the game more interesting. Who wants to watch basketball, women's basketball, if nobody, if there's no drama? I don't. I don't want to see it. I'm, I mean, I'm tired of talking about LSU, but anybody else? Full game to talk about it. Caitlin Clark pushed the girl down. I mean, she didn't get ejected. At least I don't think she did. But uh, but I would have liked to have seen the girl come back at her. That would have been kind of cool, right? Y'all are like, what? You're advocating for violence? Not really violence, but let's face it. There are a lot of things that y'all don't see in the game that's happening. The officials are not calling it trash talking. You've heard me talk about this before. A lot of things in the game, during the game, that y'all don't see. People pulling your jersey, people calling you out of your name, people talking about your team, people talking about your travel amenities. Yeah, y'all know all that. It gets pretty nasty on the court. So maybe Caitlin was a little frustrated. Maybe she was. And I look forward to seeing the saga continue. But anyway, as far as the top four, Carolina, UCLA, Stanford, and Iowa. I like that. In fact, that would be kind of a cool final four. It's a little early, but that might be a cool final four. I need some revenge in the final four mix. So I need, I need Iowa just nasty. I need South Carolina playing Iowa in the semifinals and, and just being mad about it. Yeah, I've played in a revenge game before. My team lost in 85 to Western Kentucky. And guess who we played in the semis of the final four in 86? Western Kentucky. Yeah, it was lovely. It was lovely, especially because we won. Undefeated 34 and 0, if I haven't told you that lately. But anyway, that's it, y'all. We'll see you in the next video. Who do you think is ranked higher or lower than they need to be in this week's poll? Who? Wh what's off for you in terms of the ranking? And we know rankings are just rankings, but because they mean something to the committee, they mean something. They may not mean anything in real life, but in co committee speak, and when it's time to put people, place people, places, where your team is ranking throughout these weeks, it matters. Rankings matter. We'll see you in the next one.